start recording. All right. Welcome, everyone. This is our third in the series of our LRD faculty webinars. Um, today, we are going to learn a lot about a new resource to the UDC libraries, the Jove databases. I know I'm excited to hear about them. I want to thank you for attending today. And if you're interested in attending any of our future sessions, just please go to the library's website, and you will find all the information in the registration form there for the additional webinars in this series. As a reminder, if you are attending live, you will receive a certificate of attendance and all registrants will receive a recording once it is available on our YouTube page. At the very end of the session, I will be back with a, um, a feedback form. We'd love to hear from you. But for now, I'd like to introduce Fred Foster of Jove and he will take it from here. Thank you all. Well, th thank you so much, Megan. And I um, um, thank everyone from the University of District of Columbia on attending this webinar today. We're really excited about being able to present Joe to faculty yeah. and the library. And hopefully um, what you learn about us today will help in terms of um, strengthening our you know, hold at the school. Uh, I'm gonna stop um, basically by introducing uh, the team today. As I said, I'm the account manager, handling the account for UDC. Also on the call today, we have uh, Micah Poles, who's our science advisor. We also have from our custom success team, Kushbu Josh Josie, who will be taking us through um, how to actually integrate some of uh, the material that the school prints presently has. And finally, uh, Melanie Masserant, who is uh, in library relations, is going to take us through some um, issues of discoverability and metadata. Um, which applies to some of the librarians um, uh, at, at UDC. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to kick it off and hand this off to uh, Micah, who will, now pre pre who will now start the presentation. Great. Thank you very much, Fred, and welcome, everybody. So my name is Micah Poles. I'm Joe's scientific advisor, um, and my job is to help faculty um, make full use of the resources that we offer. So to start us off, we're going to go over what is Jove exactly and what can you use it for. Um, how can you create an account so you can access all of Jove's features and also access our videos remotely. We're going to go over your access to the Jove education resources. And then I'm going to hand it over to our um, customer success representative. And we're going to talk a little bit more about training sessions that we offer and the customer support that we offer. And um, then Kushbu is going to take over and she's going to show you a couple of things on the Jove website, for example, how to embed videos into a course um, and also how to cr uh, create and request a Jove playlist, which is a super handy new feature that we launched to make life easier for you as a faculty member. And then finally, um, Melanie is going to close us off and she's going to give you some extra information that is very useful for uh, librarians. So to start us off, what is Jove exactly? Jove stands for the Journal of Visualized Experiments and recreates scientific videos that make teaching, learning, and practicing science more efficient, effective, and engaging. Now, Jove got started back in 2006 when our CEO, Moshe Pritzker, was a PhD student at Princeton University. Now, like most PhD students, Moshe was starting off one of his research projects by trying to recreate an experiment that he read about in scientific literature. Now, this experiment had to do with the creation of embryonic stem cells, but it was also quite complicated and he couldn't quite get it to work. Now, Moshe did what most PhD students do. You go to your supervisor and you complain that stuff doesn't work right and the experiment won't work. Um, and in the end, they decided to send Moshe all the way to Edinburgh, Scotland, where this experiment was originally done. Now, he spent two months in this lab trying to learn this one experiment, and that cost about $10,000 to learn this particular experiment. Now, on his way back, Moshe came up with the ideas of what if we didn't just publish scientific methods in a written format? What if we actually showed people how the original authors intended for you to do this experiment? And this is how Joe's video journal was born. Now, why is visualizing science so important? Even as a scientist, when you're trying to attempt a new technique or you're starting out in a new field, it can be really complicated to grasp exactly what an experiment should look like. For example, if we take um, part of a text article here on the left hand side, um, which kind of describes how to line up C. elegans worms for an imaging experiment, even as a scientist, if I haven't done a lot of work on uh, C. elegans, for example, it can be quite hard to picture what this is going to look like. 
Now, even if I just add a still image here on the right hand side, I already get a much better picture of what this experiment is going to look like and also whether I'm doing it right. Now, with these videos, we can fully explain how a scientific protocol uh, works and also how you how are you doing it correctly and how can you check that. So um, Joe videos are available anywhere in the world. Um, now, accessing Joe videos is relatively straightforward. When you're on your university campus, you can simply go to the Jove website and play videos from there, because we usually have your uh, the, the IP domains on file. Now, when you're off campus or you're working from home or you're teaching from home, importantly, we have various different ways to verify your access. The first one is email domain authentication. Um, if you create a Jove account with your university email address, we automatically link you to your university subscription. So this means that after signing into your account, you can access all of the videos that your school subscribes to. Now we can also work with Open Athens and Shibboleth or set up easy proxy for your school. So you can also access the videos through your university library. And finally, the best way to share content and videos with your students is by embedding it into a learning management system. This means that only you as the teacher need a Jove account, you can embed the videos into things like Blackboard and your students can simply click on the video in your course and the video will play without asking them for a login. Um, as I mentioned for this, you do need to set up your Jove account. Um, this is completely free and you can find it on our website. So when you head over to jove.com, there is a sign in button. If you already have an account with us, you can use this to log in or beneath there is a button that says create an account. This um, brings up a short questionnaire where you can tell us a little bit about yourself and whether or not you are an instructor or a student or a librarian. Um, and then you will be sent an email to verify your account. Now with your Jove account come additional features that are not available if you're not logged into your Jove account. For example, you can easily check your Jove access for your school. You can watch the videos when you're off campus. You can create embed codes that allow you to share the videos with off campus students. And you can also use your Jove account to create a playlist of your favorite videos or have a playlist created for you where videos are mapped to your course topics. And finally, a Jove account also allows you to post questions and comments for article authors. We don't allow anonymous commenting on our platform, so for this, again, you also need a Jove account. Then, what are the resources that Jove offers? We're creating scientific videos for five unique resources that are um, able to help you with education, training, and research. On the education side of Jove, we have three products available. We have Jove Core, which is our animated textbook that, that teaches foundational concepts through high impact animations. So these are short videos that quickly clarify a particular topic. Now, these textbooks are mapped to regular textbooks. For example, our uh, Jove Core biology textbook is roughly following the same structure as Campbell's biology, one of the world's most frequently used uh, biology textbooks. For chemistry, we've mapped it to OpenStax chemistry. So there is a lot of information that you can use on Jove Core. Then the next product is Jove Lab Manual. Jove Lab Manual is a set of experiments around a particular theme. For example, we have Lab Manual Biology and Lab Manual Chemistry. And here we look at each experiment from three different perspectives. We have a concept video that clarifies the background behind each experiment. Then we have a teacher preparation video that shows you as the instructor what you need to prepare before the students come to the lab in terms of getting the materials ready, creating the solutions. And then there is a student protocol that takes the students all the way through the experiment step by step and also helps them analyze the results. And then the final product is Jove Science Education. And this is very relevant for you guys, since this is what you have a subscription to. Our science education videos are lab demonstrations that teach people how to work with certain pieces of equipment and how to set up certain experiments. These are easy to understand and complete video protocols that also come with a written protocol um, that you can help if your students are first coming to the lab. You can either use this as a preparation before the students come to the lab and do the experiment themselves. Um, but you can also use it in cases where you have to teach a practical lab course and the students cannot come to the lab because we're all in quarantine and working from home.
Um, I will give you some more details about this product in a minute, but first I want to highlight some of the products that we have on the research side of Jove. On the research side of Jove, we have Jove's video journal, which is how we originally got started. So this is a peer reviewed methods journal. We publish articles in 13 different sections, ranging from behavioral psychology uh, to engineering and various topics in biology. Um, these methods are published both as a written version of the article, but we also go to the author's lab and we film how they do the experiment from start to finish. That gets produced as a video, and then the video and the written version of the article are published together on the Jove website. Uh, and then the final product is Jove's Encyclopedia of Experiments. This is a relatively new product, and it shows experimental techniques that revolve around particular model organisms or particular uh, disease models. The collections that we have available for this are Drosophila uh, melanogaster, C. elegans, and zebrafish. And later this year, we'll be releasing our first collections that are uh, centered around cancer research. For example, models for breast cancer and lung cancer. Now, um, to get, uh, get your access, to check your access is really easy. If you're going to jove.com and you're logging into your Jove account with your uh, university email address, if you scroll all the way down, um, you will find an access button. This is located under the section called for librarians. If you click on this while you're logged in with your university email address, it will give you a, a, an, an overview page where you can see all of the products that your university subscribes to. Now for you guys, I've already uh, taken the liberty to highlight some of these collections to make it easy for you to find the content you have access to. So for your school, you have access to basic biology and advanced biology, which are some of our most frequently used collections. You also have access to our chemistry collections, our physics collections, and one of our sections of clinical skills um, that gives you all the information about working with coronavirus and specifically uh, COVID-19. This collection can also be found on the Jove homepage under the COVID-19 header here depicted in red. Now let's highlight some of the collections a little bit more. As I mentioned, you have access to both basic and advanced biology and one of the collections of clinical skills. So basic biology um, is an introduction to working in the lab. We start off with having lab safety videos, but also general laboratory techniques where we introduce the students to a lot of the equipment that you find in a lab uh, and also how to work with it. So having uh, how to use a micro pipetter, how to use a centrifuge or how to set up basic experiments like carrying out a Western blot or gel electrophoresis. We also have some um, collections around model organisms. So if you're working with any type of model organism, um, these are a great collections to have a look at. And there's also a lab animal research collection. Then in advanced biology, we go in a little bit deeper and we look at the particular fields in biology. So this consists of six sub collections where we have microbiology and immunology, developmental biology, genetics, neuroscience and cell biology. And each of these collections have 15 videos uh, that teach you a particular technique. And then finally, the clinical skills collection has six different series. The series you guys have access to is the COVID-19 collection. Then you also have access to chemistry and physics. So in chemistry, we have six different collections, which range from general chemistry. We have two collections on organic chemistry. We have an inorganic chemistry collection, an analytical chemistry collection, and a biochemistry collection. This biochemistry collection is also very relevant for a lot of our biology students. Um, so if you haven't found what you're looking for in the biology section, do feel free to check out the biochemistry section as well. And then finally, you have access to two of our physics collections, physics one and physics two. This is really great if you want to recap physics from high school or have the basis for a lot of other courses. Um, a lot of students in biology and chemistry need a basic knowledge of physics. Um, and this is a really great collection to make sure that everyone starts off uh, at the same level. Now, then when we go into one of these videos, this is what a typical video page would look like. We each of these pages has several helpful features for both instructors and students. So from the instructor perspective, we can easily navigate the different parts of the video. 
These videos can be anywhere between five and 12 minutes long, and therefore we've divided them into different chapters. You can click on the different chapter headers um, to jump to that part of the video, making it easy to navigate or to rewatch part of the video without having to start from scratch. Um, you also have the option to create a quiz. For this, you do need to be logged into your Jove account and you need to have told us that you, you are a professor. So you need to have an instructor's Jove account. Then you can set up multiple choice quizzes for your students that you can either send to them via email. They will receive a link and they can go to jove.com and take the test there. You then get all the results from your students and download those as a CSV file. You also have the option to ask us for the quiz questions and then you can embed those into Blackboard. You can embed both videos and quizzes by using the embed video button underneath here. The quiz questions you do need to request from our customer success uh, department and Kushbu will tell you a little bit more about that later. For the videos, you can either embed them all separately using the embed links that are underneath the videos. Again, for this, you need to be signed into a Jove account. Um, you can also ask us uh, for a cartridge that allows you to embed multiple videos at once. So if you want to use many videos in your courses, you can let us know and we can create a cartridge that allows you to upload a bulk of videos at the same time. We also have a written version, uh, a written protocol available. And um, this is available for download as a PDF. So if you want the written version of the protocol to use in the lab, um, you can print that. From a student perspective, we also have some helpful features. First of all, we have speed regulations. We know a lot of our, our students like to watch the videos at a slightly higher speed to get through the video a bit quicker. So you can regulate the speed after you hit play on the video. We also have subtitles and closed captions available in multiple different languages. So if you have students from different linguistic backgrounds, this is a really great feature um, that allows students to get a little bit of extra information in their own language. We also have a video transcript available. And again, this can be translated into different languages. And finally, the navigation, again, is also a useful feature for students where they can click, click quickly rewatch part of the video that might be a bit harder to understand. And again, we have the protocol available as well. Now, on some of our science education videos, like the ones you will find in general and organic chemistry, we have a new feature available that we're looking to roll out uh, across the other sections in this year. This is called the interactive mode. And what it does is when you click the interactive mode button underneath the video, it will overlay the quiz questions on top of the video. So at certain points, the video will pause and ask the students a multiple choice question. If answered correctly, you can then continue watching the video. If you get the answer wrong, it will give you one hint um, and allow you to, to choose another answer. This interactive mode can also be embedded into the course LMS. So if the interactive mode is active, and you click on the embed video button, it will embed the video with the interactive mode enabled. Now then how to navigate the Jove website and find what you need. How do you know in which section to look? Now, if you're not quite sure where to start, we do have a very nice search option available on the website. This kind of works like a Google search, so you can simply type in any topic that you're interested in. For example, we are looking for articles here on soil bacteria. Now, if we hit uh, search, this brings up um, the search criteria for all of Jove. So on the left hand side, you will always find the articles that are related to Jove research products. So if I'm a researcher, these are the protocols that I want to have a look at. If I'm looking for anything on education, for example, I'm a student or I'm looking for something to use in my courses, you can have a look and expand all of the education videos that are related to the search criteria. If we get a lot of results, there's also the options to narrow down the search a bit further by selecting publication date ranges, looking for specific authors or institutes, or narrowing things down by subject area. Then I'd like to highlight the Faculty Resources Center. If you are teaching at all and you want us, do you want any help uh, with using our videos in your courses, this is a great place to start. 
The Faculty Resources Center can be found on the Jove homepage here in red, and it has various different features available. First of all, it has guides for teaching remotely using Jove videos. So if you want to stream the videos in a lecture to your students and you're using Zoom or Microsoft Teams, this is where you find guides on how to check that you have the right settings enabled. We also have integration guides. So if you want to embed videos into Blackboard um, using, uh, using our guides, here is where you find how to do that. And then finally, we have videos mapped to various different courses. Um, and Kushbu is going to tell you a little bit more about this in a minute, but here is also where you find some of these pre-mapped playlists already. So if you're teaching in biology and chemistry or clinical medicine, have a look at some of these playlists and see if there's anything useful for you already there. Now, we are also running free weekly training sessions. These are uh, Thursdays at 9.30 a.m. EST, and we're running these every week, and anyone who's interested in learning more about Jove can join these. If you have any additional questions, you can also ask them here. And we have a dedicated support team for your school. We have a group of curriculum specialists, and Kushbu is the curriculum specialist for your school. She can help you embed videos into Blackboard and also answer all your questions and help you get a customized playlist on specific course topics. So Kushbu is now going to uh, give you a short live demo of this on our website. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for that uh, information, Micah. Um, so yes, uh, Jove has different ways of how you can use these resources. You can embed <coughs> single videos, you can use a playlist option, and you can also ask for a common cartridge. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and share my screen here. And firstly, go ahead and log in to help you how to log into a Jove account, all right? Just give me one. All right, uh, can everybody see my screen? Great, thank you. So this is how you go to the Joe website, like Micah did inform us earlier as well, that we can go ahead and log in. First, we have to create an account. Once you've created an account, you will be able to access the videos completely. Without logging into your Joe account, if you're trying to access any video on our website, it will only play the first 20 to 22 seconds and may not play more than that. So for you to embed any videos or to view any videos, you need to definitely create an account. I already have an account here, so I'm going to go ahead and sign in to the account. Just bear with me while it log while it is. Okay, so here. Once you sign in using your institutional email ID, you will see your name here, appearing here. That means you have successfully created your account and you will have access to all the content that your library subscribed to. Now, uh, here you do have access to uh, clinical science, basic biology, advanced biology, and also some of our chemistry content, which can be found in our education section. Now. Just if you're embedding a single video, we're gonna help you with that. So when we go to basic biology, I can create, I'll simply go ahead and just pick up one topic here. Okay. Now here we do have an embed video option which is highlighted. So when we click on this, it will show us an embed code, right? Now here we do have an option to show this article's title, the chapters as well, so that when you copy the embed code and you embed it into your Blackboard, you will also see the article that is written, right? Now we go ahead and do a copy embed code. And once we've done this, uh, I will be able to help you in how to embed this. We do have written instructions. Um, unfortunately, I do not have an account to Blackboard right now. 
but if any of you can log into Blackboard, I can walk you through the steps of how you will be able to, you know, go ahead and embed this into Blackboard. Now, this is one way, like I said, this is in, um, embedding a single video. Similar way, we have a common cartridge where if you give me the list of videos that you would like to use, I will compile them in a file, which will be uh, very much uh, useful for you. You can uh, embed that as well to Blackboard. So that's not a problem. The other option that we have is creating playlist. Like Micah mentioned, it is one of our newest features and is very, very um, popular as well as of now. So when you log into your account, you can go to my playlist. Now here in this section, you may see a couple of playlists already because I have them created for a lot of faculties. However, I can go ahead and do create new playlist. I can name this playlist, I'm just gonna name this as test. It is for education. It will ask you for your field of study. I will gonna select biology and I'm gonna just take it as an app anatomy and physiology. Now I can go ahead and add one single video as well, or videos in box. So what I do here is, we do have a search button here, we click on search. It will give me all the videos related to anatomy. I can go ahead and select the video that I want to, and the video gets added here. Same way, I can go ahead and add videos in bulk as well. What I need to do is when I click on add videos in bulk, I will have to look into the videos and add their article IDs. For an example, if I go to add video, and if I'm gonna look at any other video here, like this one, right? So when I go to the Joe website again, I'm gonna save this one and again, show you how to add the videos in bulk. So when I save this, this is going to create a playlist. Now faculty can create their own playlist or send in a request to me, wherein I can go ahead and uh, help them in creating the playlist. We do have a team of subject matter experts who will actually go ahead and curate the data for you and send you the most accurate playlist. That way you can also share this playlist. We do have an option of copy playlist URL. You can copy this playlist and also share this as an offline method for your students to use this and to watch the videos. Now, if you would like to embed this playlist, the videos in this playlist, you can again, just go ahead and send me a request. I will create a file for you which will be useful for you to embed into your LMS. That way the entire playlist that you have created will be embedded into your playlist. Now about quiz banks, yes, we do have quiz banks as well, where uh, there are ready to use question data sets, which we can share with you as in when you request based on whatever uh, playlist that you're using, or if you're using uh, you know, just the general lab techniques based on that, we have different set of questions that can be shared with you and you can go ahead and use that. So this is basically how you create a playlist and you can share it as well. You can embed an individual video as well. And you can also view all the videos that your library has subscribed to by logging onto the Joe account. Anybody would uh, have any questions about this? Okay, yeah, Micah, that's all from my side. All right, perfect. Then we'll now continue with Melanie, who's gonna give us some more information that is uh, specifically very useful for our librarians that are listening today. Melanie? Thank you. One moment. All right, can we uh, see my screen? Okay. All right, uh, I'm uh, Jove's uh, library relations manager. I, I joined Jove 
in October. Uh, I've experienced uh, working in academic publishing as well as uh, being a librarian myself. And uh, in this role, you know, kind of, you know, think of me as, as like your post sales uh, support person to address pretty much any, any library related topic. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Jove's uh, discovery improvements, uh, how, to, how to highlight your Jove subscription with using a LibGuide, I'll show a sample of that. And then I'm gonna wrap it up with uh, using Jove resources for alternative education resource initiatives. More on that near the end. Now, as you, many of you librarians know about the benefits of improved discovery. You know, it helps researchers discover you know, more content. There's so, so much competition for end users to get to content and there's so much out there. Um, improving discovery, just maybe add, put stuff more at the top of the list. You're more likely to get, you know, end users to click on stuff if it's more discoverable. Um, you know, click through traffic from a university's link resolver really does incre increase the usage that's gonna come from the library catalog. Um, and discovery services fare well with Google Scholar. And as we all know, strong discovery makes for higher usage. So a little bit about our ongoing discoverability initiatives. Um, we've gotten a lot of feedback from stakeholders in the library community about, you know, our mark records for Job's science education series not, not being so good, meaning they just, there was a lot of fields that were missing. We've, we've worked on um, enhancing our bibliographic records. Therefore, we were able to take, take that metadata from the BIP record and feed it into our mark records. So, you know, if you're interested in getting mark records for the subscription that you currently have, uh, just let me know and I can get those for you. We've also updated our collection targets with our various discovery service vendors such as uh, OCLC, uh, EBSCO, and uh, Ex Libris. And I know your library is an Ex Libris uh, Alma user. And we've also updated our KBART list. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a bit of a cold. Okay, so I kind of like looked at what you're subscribing to, and I'm not sure if you've activated uh, the collection targets in your discovery layer, which is Ex Libris Alma. Here's some examples of what you'd want to look for when you go to activate those targets. So, you know, I see that you have you have Jove Basic Biology, Advanced Bi Advanced Biology, and Chemistry. So, what you have to do is you have to have to activate each of the sections that are part of the part of those collections. So when you want to get everything activated for basic biology, you know, you have you have to go in and look for the targets like generate general laboratory techniques, um, biology one, two, and so forth. Now yeah, we were told that our our naming conventions for our targets they weren't quite matching um, how how we sell our subscriptions. So We've gone and we've updated all of our targets so it kind of matches how, how our libraries are subscribing to content. We also wanted it to match how they're, how they're named on the website. So that was an improvement that took some time. And if you need help with this, just, just contact me. Uh, Ex Libris is in the process of uploading all of this stuff. So I'm uh, the contact that deals directly with, with Ex Libris. So. If you have any improvements, any feedback you'd like to share uh, later on, like offline, please let me know. And here's just an example of, of a part of a bib record that, that we kind of improved. So the field, the sixth field for additional material characteristics we added, we added seven field, we added a video ID. Um, and you know, and before we didn't have um, the video name or the link included. So all of our records are not only going to have, um, they also include chapter, it just, you can't see it here, um, but we do, our, our, our records do include the chapter level as well as um, the, the video that belongs in the chapter. So, you know, before these records were quite, quite sparse, it might've just had like the name and maybe the video link, but now it's, it's got the video name, the chapter, the link. So all, all of this is just, you know, when you, 
start uploading um, either catalogs in your discovery layer, or if you're pulling stuff from Ex Libris, these updates are there and it's just gonna make the content a lot more discoverable for your end users. And we also updated our KBART lists. And you know, I'll just remind you, it's a knowledge base and re related tools. And this, this list, this includes all electronic resource title lists and the coverage data that comes from publishers and that we supply this to Ex Libris. So this is just another, another layer of, that just makes, helps make your content more discoverable on the back end and then it feeds into your library catalog. And uh, moving, moving on to LibGuides, um, you know, you guys know LibGuides are a great way, a great way to not just to highlight your resources, but also just to give instructions to end users. And I thought this was a really great LibGuide from the University of Central Florida. It's really geared towards someone who's new with Job. And um, since you guys are new with Job, I thought this is a good sample. You know, theirs is a little bit different. You know, I saw a lot of LibGuides that were more text heavy. Uh, but this one really does a great job at integrating um, like how-to videos. We got accessing Jove, a bit about Jove, Jove support, and it includes stuff about Jove faculty demos. So I can send you, you know, offline um, more samples of really good LibGuides. But, you know, I think integrating LibGuides and work, you know, either working with faculty on subject specific ones, or if you want to create ones um, per database, you know, but both routes are good, um, but I think this one is really good for someone who's new to Jove. And finally, Jove for alternative education resources. So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with OER, which is Open Education Resources. And of course, AER is alternative education. So think of alternative education as really like library licensed resources that you're bringing your researchers, you already subscribe to it. Um, some, sometimes OER resources don't quite, don't quite cut it when you're trying to support um, the learning outcomes and like, like a syllabi. So I think, you know, think of Jove as um, something for AER. If you're, if you're working on with, with faculty on converting courses to AER where, you know, assigned materials necessarily aren't commercial textbooks, which are really expensive, but just kind of think of Jove as you know, you're already licensing it, you're already using it. Why not use it for more course conversion? And you, know, you also need to have alternative formats. So I think it's, it's a great thing to use. And uh, Jove textbook mapping is also included in OpenStax and biology. And here's just like some, you know, thinking about OER, I'm not sure how much you guys have done with it. I can talk to you about that separately later since we're running short on time. But just think about um, promoting and sustaining OER initiatives. You know, you want to measure your success. You want to be able to show the metrics for changes in completion rates, uh, test scores, uh, grades, like when AER material is assigned compared to previous commercial textbooks. And you want to share your materials. Um, some faculty does; they don't always have the most time to work on this. But you know, if you've created any um, completed AER course conversions. Yeah, you know, share, share, share with faculty. And then again, find your, your AER champions on campus. That could be other, other librarians, it could be faculty, it could be instructor, instructor designers, it could be deans or directors. And then, you know, if you are doing AER, you want to build a message that's going to be uh, cohesive, consistent, the same every time, keep it short. You know, it's all about saving student money, sa saving students money. So, that's really all I have for you on AER and what I'm doing with Job Discoverability. And I'll send you my email in the chat later. And that's all for me. I think we need to get to Q&A. Yes, I'd like to open it up if anyone has any questions about Job. I know I learned a lot uh, in this demo and I will definitely be sending this to some particular some faculty in particular who could make use of this this semester. Uh, please feel free to pop your questions in the chat and we would be happy to answer them. Just as a reminder, if you have attended live, you will receive a certificate of attendance and we would like for your feedback. So I'm gonna put the feedback form in the chat 
and we'd love to hear from you. Also, anyone who registered will get a recording of today's session and it will be up permanently on our YouTube page, uh, hopefully sometime this week. I had one question about the videos. I noticed one of the um, screenshots showed that it was captioned. Are those live captions uh, just directly correlating with the transcript that appear on the screen or is that uh, something that's permanently there or is something that's optional to add? So that is something that is always available. So it is based on the transcript of the video, um, but you can turn it on or off. Right. So for our uh, research products, we have closed captioning available in English only for now. Um, but on all of our education products, we have at least 10 languages available for closed captioning. Oh, wonderful. Great. Are there any additional questions? I'm not seeing any come in. I would like to thank you today for both joining us and for giving us this wonderful demonstration of Jove. Um, I know there's a lot there that our students could make use of uh, very soon. All right. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful day.